What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So it's been a really interesting weather week here. As you can see above me, it's still overcast. We've actually had seven straight days of rain. It's now actually a hurricane, Hurricane Barry, and it's actually hitting New Orleans as I speak right now. So pretty nasty. As far as that goes, it's also been nasty here on the lawn because of the fact that we've had a lot of humidity, no sunlight at all, and lots of rain. It's really wreaking havoc as far as disease goes here in my lawn. The thing about disease in lawns is people panic a lot. And as I was telling John Perry the other day, I actually don't panic when I get a lawn disease. I'm actually kind of happy about it because it gives me a reason to make some fresh content. The thing is a lot of you guys are dealing with disease right now. And it's just one of those things that can happen in the summertime. The key is, especially if you have St. Augustine grass, I guess I'll talk to you guys first. Your lawn can and will recover super quick. It's just the way our, our grasses grow. The same as with Bermuda, Zoysia, and even Centipede to a certain degree. Our warm season grasses that spread by rhizome and or stolen, they can recover really quick. And the disease that I'm dealing with here, gray leaf spot, isn't typically that serious anyway, especially down here in Florida, even though I will say that this is probably the worst outbreak of it that I've had in the three years that I've been living in this house. Now, the other thing I figure I'll share here with you guys is, you know, I always try to let you know that some of the things that you struggle with are the same things I struggle with. And one of those is, is I'm not perfect with my mowing all the time. Not only am I dealing with leaf spot here, I'm dealing with an overgrown lawn. I mean, it's one of those things when it rains for seven days straight, you can't get out and mow. And plus I've been out of town here and there. You know, my schedule hasn't lined up to where I would get to enjoy the mow at midweek like I would like to. Just so just like many of you guys, you know, you get busy and sometimes you're not able to mow quite as often as you can. And so, you know, you gotta do a little painful mow every once in a while and it's double painful when you got leaf spot disease in there. But I try to tell you this to let you know, hey, it happens to all of us. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's lawn is always looking perfect. Even though on this camera, it's gonna look perfect. And even though as people drive by, they can't really see any flaws in the lawn here necessarily. I can see them and it bothers me, but I try to just convey that to you to let you know, don't panic. This is just how things work. You know, people get sick, lawns get sick, people recover, lawns recover. And through all of that, you learn along the way. So the next time it happens, you kind of know what to do. Maybe you get ahead of it, you get on top of it. Or if you're like me, you get six, seven straight days of rain and you're out of town and you can't do anything about it anyway and now you just get to do a little bit of a corrective but with that the first thing I need to do here is enjoy the mow before I do enjoy the mow though I wanted to mention one thing earlier this week I actually got to go up to Greensboro Georgia see the Green County plant see everything that's going on up there as well as participate in a golf tournament that supports Gratitude America which is an organization that supports combat veterans and their transition back into you know society here in the world and all kinds of great things they do I want to show you just a few clips from that here real quick Millennials don't care if we keep score, right? Woo! It's gonna happen, so. All right, there's people waiting. Drone footage. Actually, yeah, people are gonna think uh, I'm using a drone now. Yeah. Wait. That is on the green. What? What a shot! Holy! You stomped it. You Look. Stomped it. Dude. 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 That Dude. was the spot right yeah, there. Yeah, I know. See this? You know what this is going to do? This is going to bring Poa Trivialis. Poa Trivialis right there. See that? That's Poa Annua. Poa Annual. That's chemical free Poa Trivialis fix by Brad, who can't be on camera, just his hand. Oh, wait, look at this. Curly Doc. Uh, What's with the dog? Oh. <laughs> hey, it's my dog. Shout out to Striper Man. He was the guy that came up with this joke. Link in the description below. What the freak is that? 
It's Poa Trivialis! That's also Poa Trivialis. So I had a ton of fun supporting Gratitude America and hanging out with the guys. And I want to thank everybody at Greene County for, you know, I've worked closely with John Perry and now Paul Castleberry and Brad Huff over there. And those guys are great. But being up there at the plant, I actually got to meet the people that are, you know, behind the scenes, you know, picking and packing the bottles, making sure that you guys get everything on time, quickly, clean, efficiently. Everything there is run first class and it's run by some really awesome people. So I just want to say to all you folks that work there at Greene County, thank you so much for taking care of our customers and being good partners to our DIY community. We really appreciate you and everything that you do. Now, one of the thing is, is this week, John Perry was actually down here visiting some of his customers. I don't know if you guys know or not, but the products that we sell there, the Greene County Furt products, those are actually professional products. They've been in the professional industry for years. We're just fortunate that we're able to, you know, package them up smaller and get them to DIYers. But he was coming here for a visit and I didn't have time to mow because I got back from being up there. I only had a couple days to catch up on things and he was here Friday. So what I did is, is I just did an edging and a weed whack. And in other words, the lawn needed to be cut. I wasn't going to get to it. It was going to be super overgrown, which is really super overgrown now. But what I did was to make it look a little sharper was I just did an edging and I just did a weed whacking. And so, so hearkening back to a term that I think the lawn tools created, I'll link their channel in the description below. They've got a term called cheater stripes. And I actually decided that maybe what I was doing is just called a cheater mow. In other words, you don't have time to get to the cut, but you want it to look good. So you do a cheater mow and what you do is you just do the edges. I mean, maybe it's even like a haircut. You need a full haircut, but instead of getting the full haircut, you just trim up around the edges. So it looks like you got a haircut and looks cleaner. Maybe that's what I'll call it. Maybe this is a cheater mow. So I'm gonna show you what my cheater mow <laughs> looks like. And now keep in mind, this has been overgrown. Even the cheater mow was overgrown, you know, a couple couple days there. But uh, I don't know, you guys tell me what you think. So there you go. You, you can see right here where I took the weed whacker through. Look at that. So it just cleans the edges up a little bit. Now it's, all of this is even overgrown since I did it. As you can see here, you do the sidewalk too. Make everything look as tight as you can, even though it's not cut, still doesn't look too bad. Also, real quick, I wanted to point something out. We always tell you to bag clippings when disease is present. And I think this is obvious, but in case it's not, I'm gonna go ahead and illustrate it here. So you can see that this is, this is a blade of grass that's got the leaf spot on it there. And so this would mean that the disease is actually manifesting itself right in this area here. So if I am to cut this off and literally remove it from the lawn, take it completely away, now I have taken some of the disease out of the lawn, literally. And so that is why we tell you to catch your clippings, because you are literally taking some of the disease out of your lawn. Another reason you want to catch clippings is because most mowers in mulch mode are designed to keep the clippings up underneath the deck a little bit longer so that way they can get cut more. What that means is that the clippings take a couple of seconds to get out and you're still walking forward so you could literally be taking the disease from one part of the lawn to the next just because those clippings are hanging up under the deck a little bit longer.
Wanted to take a quick break here because I wanted to define irony. You know it's bad when your fungus also gets a fungus. That's a fungus on a fungus. At least that's what I'm going with. Well, what's up y'all? Well now is the next morning. Actually today is Sunday morning So if you're watching this video on Sunday night, I'm actually doing everything from this point forward on Sunday morning So it just kind of shows you I'm spraying and praying spreading and dreading and editing and putting up a video all in the same day So kind of cool there, but actually a little stressful because I'm behind now The other thing to consider is one of my products has an 85 degree temperature restriction That is the liquid propiconazole and I'm here in the morning now So I got to get that down quick because we will be over 85 very very quickly and that's something people ask about quite a bit so I'll give you a little bit more detail on that now the products we're using today for fungicides they come right from Home Depot and this is the propiconazole it's got that 85 degree temperature restriction on it really the best thing to do is if you're gonna be 85 during the day is to spray in the evening so that way it's below 85 for several hours after your application I can't do that right now I'm just just how timing worked out for me so I might get a little stunting and that's what will happen depending on your grass type if you put this on and it's over 85 or it gets over 85 very soon after you spray it can stunt the grass a little bit so it's definitely gonna be over 85 it might even be over 85 already so one of those things I got to do it I don't have a choice and really it's not gonna bother the St. Augustine grass that bad so it's a give and takes one of those things that you just got to do and that's what I got to do so let's get out here and let's get spraying and praying so these are the products that we're using here and you're gonna see that this is similar to my bulletproof strategy which is a preventative strategy in case you're wondering it's been well over 30 days since I did my first preventative so I just kind of got caught I didn't get the uh, I didn't do a second application when it was raining because I was out of town and all that and uh, so I didn't get to it so now I got to do a corrective so the only thing that's gonna be different here is the rates so we're gonna start with this Scott's disease X the active ingredient in this is a zoxystrobin it is exactly the same as the professional formulation called heritage you can get this at any home depot lows whatever around you so just go in here so the curative rate you're going to see the preventative rate is two pounds per thousand the curative is four pounds per thousand so this is going to be a more expensive application i'm going to use a scott spreader so the setting is going to be three and three quarters i'm going to probably put it at four just to make sure and we're good so that's it setting four and four pounds per thousand that means then that this bag this bag is 10 pounds so i'm going to get 2,500 square feet out of it, right? Because 10 divided by four is 2.5. So that's perfect. 2,500 square feet is what I will get out of this bag. Now I've got a lot more, more of the lawn to do, but just to keep this video easy, I'm gonna be doing just section three so you guys can pay attention. So section three just so happens to be 2,500 square feet. It's fun how my math always works out just perfect that way. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole lawn you know, front, back, and sides. But again, for this video, just section three to so keep the math easy. So that one single bag will cover 2,500 square feet. And so that's what we're gonna do first. Just a couple things real quick. I don't do a trim pass when it comes to applying products that are not gonna cause a color change to the lawn. What I'll do is just throw as close to the edge as I can and then just use my blower to get anything back into the lawn that went out on the sidewalk. Each successive pass I'm throwing back to the wheel tracks of the previous pass and I'll tell you that with these Scott spreaders and with this product it's really hard to see what's coming out and it's gonna feel like nothing is coming out but you just have to trust that it is. And as you'll see with me, I actually had to make a second pass to get it all down. So you can see I've finished my pass. I've got quite a bit left over here. So that's why I talk about these are not precision pieces of equipment. I put it on even a little higher setting than what they recommend. And it, it used, what, two-thirds of the bag? Maybe? Maybe. But that's okay. I'm just going to keep it on the same setting now and just do another pass. It's just double work. And that's, you know, I'm still kind of learning this spreader. I've only used it a few times. But it's much better to come out lighter than go too heavy and come up short. So here we go. Second pass. Thank you. 
The next thing I'm going to do is apply humic 12, humic acid. I'm applying 32 ounces across this 2,500 square feet. That's a pretty heavy rate. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's going to help oxygenate the soil and get the microbes kicked out, which will just help the lawn as it pushes the disease out naturally. You'll see that I'm using a different Chapin hose end sprayer here. I told you guys I was going to try a few different ones out. And this one, I just don't like the way that it swings and rocks around when you spray with it. But I will say it did handle the Humic 12 very well. The spray pattern is nice. Although you don't have any adjustment in the spray pattern, it's only got the one nozzle on it. So jury's still out and I'm going to use it a little bit more and see how it does next time when I spray some 002 microgreen in a couple weeks. Okay, got my humic acid down. Now it's time for the propiconazole. Now the reason I did the humic first is, is because I just think about logically what am I going to be walking on. So you do the dry thing first, because walking on that's not that big a deal. Then the second thing I did was the humic 12, because I'm going to have to walk on it when I spray the fungicide, and I would rather walk on humic acid than walk on the fungicide. But it doesn't really matter, you know. You know, I follow the PPE, shoes plus socks, all that kind of stuff. Like I always tell you guys, when it comes down to it, just don't make a mess. Now one other thing before we spray, a lot of people have asked me in the last couple videos why I'm never sweating, and I think it's because I wear white, because I think you can probably see. I'm completely sweated through here. But yeah, normally that's why I wear white, because it just doesn't show up on camera the same. Okay, so just open it up, read the label real quick. Now, this one doesn't necessarily give you a curative rate. It just basically tells you that this bottle still covers 5,000 square feet, but if you're trying to cure disease, you apply every 14 days, or you reapply every 14 days, rather than every 30 days. In other words, if you're going to do it as a preventative, you can treat every 30 days to prevent, and if you're actually trying to cure or control an existing disease, reapply every 14 days. Now, there's a higher rate, too, where you can have this bottle. 32 ounces cover 2,500 square feet, but that's for Bermuda grass decline, Visarium blight, and summer patch. I don't have that. I just have leaf spot, and I've got already an application down of the granular is So I'm going to stick with the 32 ounces, which is how big this is, covers 5,000 square feet, but instead of reapplying every 30 days, I'll just reapply every 14. So here we go. So half of this bottle will cover my section here, section three, and it tells me five to six minutes, but if I remember right, this sprays out a lot quicker than that. So remember, sight glass on on the side you just kind of watch for that when half of it's gone you better hope that you're done with your application so let's go out and spray and pray this is a brand new ortho sprayer there's a couple of things that I do to modify this. This weight slides, obviously, to hold the, the straw down to the end. I always cut this off, so this is just gone. And then I'll put like a rubber band. Oh, this is nice. So then this would get like a rubber band or something, because we want to hold that back up, which I don't have here handy. So say we tie that there, this now holds. Okay. Okay. So now we got better flow. If you see your thing clogging, there's a little a diaphragm right inside here, and this is flexible, see that? It just kind of pulls down. If you give this thing a little yank, boop, it'll clear the line. And that's all Does it, it makes. Does it make that sound? Boop, boop. Yep, did you hear it? Ready? Boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's usually where you get stuff stuck is in this little spring-loaded area, because I never even knew that. So what you can do to test it is before you stick everything back in here, have your hose on, get a couple kicks and just put your finger right here and you'll hear it and you'll also feel it. it'll stick to your finger as it's pulling material. So you can just like that and you're good to go. All right, I got an old one that's clogged, so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I never even knew that. So that that's the mods to make this thing flow without any other trouble. So if you are getting jamming, it's always right there and that, that's flexible. All right. That was worth your trip. Whoop, 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 whoop. 